SLAs, SLOs, and SLIs are the reason why companies like Google, Amazon, and Microsoft have to give you a really, really good service. Because if they don't, you could get all your money back. I know, right? Who doesn't like free money? So let's go through exactly what they are in this video. A lot of people don't know this, but if your site on AWS has less than 95% uptime in a month, you can get all your money back. Take that, Bezos. But why 95%? Why not 94 or 98? Well, that's because of an SLI, which helps come up with the SLO, which helps write the SLA. Now, I know I'm losing you, but hold on. This will all make sense in the next five minutes. So an SLA, short for service level agreement, is a legal document or a set of promises a company makes to a customer, listing out all the services they provide, how available these services will be, and how quickly they'll respond to issues with these services. It also has a list of punishments, I mean, <coughs> penalties they'll incur if they're not able to meet this agreement. Let's go through a quick example. Chuck over here is a rice farmer and Joe on this side owns a sushi restaurant. Both these guys have a legal written agreement and they've agreed for Chuck to provide Joe with one bag of high quality rice. So this bag has 95 to 90% 90 high quality grains and he has to provide that to Joe every single day. And all Joe has to do is give Chuck $400 a month. That seems reasonable, right? But if Chuck misses one day, then Joe will get two bags of rice the following day. And also, if Chuck provides a bag of rice to Joe that is less than 90% high quality rice, so we'll say about 80%, then Joe will get $10 off his next bill. This is a really simple example of an SLA. Let's take a look at another one. Here is a list of all the SLAs that AWS provide, and here is one for EC2. Now they promise that your EC2 instance should have more than 99.5% uptime. And if it has less than that, but more than 99.0%, then you'll get some credit back. But what is 99.5% uptime? How do I figure that out? So in a typical month that has 30 days, each day has 24 hours, and each hour has 60 minutes, then that will equal 43,200 minutes. So this is how many minutes that your site should be up for, according to AWS. So if it's down for 0 0.6 at this time, that is actually 259.2 minutes, which is equal to four hours and 20 minutes. Now, I am no genius. I did some prep before recording this video, and that's how I got to this figure. But this means that if your site is down for four hours and 20 minutes, then Amazon owes you some money. But how does Amazon or anyone else figure out these figures for their SLAs? Well, this is where SLOs come in. An SLO, short for service level objective, is a measure of how reliable a service is. It's kind of like an internal target or goal the company set themselves to try and meet a customer's expectation of what a good service is. So if we go back to our example, so let's imagine there was more to this SLA. So we could say, as well as providing rice every day, Chuck also had to provide rice cakes and maybe even rice flour. So we've got a few things going on. And one of these things, so just one thing to do on the SLA is known as an SLO. Now an SLO, usually has an upper and lower bound. And in this case, it has an upper bound of 95% and a lower bound of 90% high quality rice. I know what you're thinking. I did mention that SLOs are internal and this is true, but they can be made public through an SLA. Let me explain that a bit more. So internally, we can say Chuck had an SLO, so a target of being able to deliver 100% to 95% high quality rice. And this is something that he worked out he could do. But to give himself some leeway on the SLA, he said 95 to 90% quality. And of course, there are some cases where the internal SLO and the value on their SLA match completely. But how does Chuck know that each one of his bags of rice has 95 to 90% quality? And how did he reach that figure? You guessed it. This is where SLIs come in. 
SLI stands for Service Level Indicator, and it's a metric used to measure the actual performance of a service. So the SLO is a target or goal, and the SLI is the actual performance. In fact, without the SLI, you can't work out the SLO. Let me show you. Long before Chuck was selling rice to Joe, he had no idea he could hit this or even this quality of rice. So what he did was he measured the quality of his rice for months, maybe years, before he realized, wait a minute, I could probably consistently hit 100 to 95% high quality rice. And that became his SLO, his target, his goal. Now the values that he worked out before he was selling to Joe, so this could have been maybe for month one, he hit 90%, for month two, he might have hit 100, month three, 95, and so on. These values are called the SLI. And just like the SLO, the SLI is also internal. But just because Chuck has an SLO, he has his target, doesn't mean he stops getting values for the SLI. In fact, Chuck is still calculating the quality of his rice each time he gives it to Joe to make sure that he can still meet his internal SLO and his SLA. He may have 100% quality rice, he may have 96, 95, it doesn't really matter as long as he's meeting his internal SLO. Similarly, AWS and other companies most likely have a way of measuring the actual performance of their service. These are metrics over time, aggregating things like number of requests, latency, and failure per request. In fact, because these SLIs are internal, AWS or other companies, let's face it, could have a lower uptime than reported on their status page. And this is why you have to actually monitor your own site and all the services you use so that if this kind of thing happens, you don't let them get away with it. And those are the differences between SLAs, SLOs, and SLIs. I hope you found it useful. And in the next video, we're gonna talk about Docker versus Podman. Which one's faster? Which one's more secure? And most importantly, which one has the better looking mascot?